Now we will move on to public participation. Uh, I have a uh, person by the name of Harrison. Thank you. Uh, I saw this article and it actually amazed me. The sharpshooters can't tell the difference between a doe, buck, and a vino. One of, one of our kids was out there. And this white deer used to bring people from all over to come and see this magnificent creature, including myself. Now I will not be coming to this park because the deer's not here. The draw is not here. And I think that it's so sad. I think the sharpshooters need to be instructed and careful. Just because something moves, you don't kill it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I brought a picture of the albino deer. Now to me, I could see that deer probably 300 yards away in the snowstorm, surrounded by anything. I'd just like to know, how could anybody shoot this deer with the blue eyes? How could you shoot it? I mean, how could you shoot it? It's could you shoot that deer if it lifted its head up and just plug it right in the head? I used to hunt deer a lot. I could shine deer at night. I used to use a spotlight. I could pick out a frog on a deer's back at 200 yards. I'd still like to know how could they kill this deer. It just upsets me very much. A sharpshooter? You, you would, what, could he tell if there was a little kid in back of him? How would they know if there's a little kid back? Okay, he doesn't even know what hell my out deer looks like, for God's sakes. I know I'm hyped up, but I just don't understand how somebody could kill this beautiful deer. And then not only that, there's other beautiful deer that's been killed. In 2012, they shot a monster buck that I had taken pictures of. It is still now the state record bull kill buck. Now, nobody followed up to ask the kid when he shot the deer, uh, can we see where you shot the deer? Where did you hit it at? So we know you shot it on our property. They found it in the toboggan run area. And this is not a state record deer. Nobody did anything to find out. I called the, uh, the Michigan people that scored the deer and the one guy in Ohio, he wanted to do something about it because he believed my story that the guy poached the deer. I mean, you can't prove it because you weren't there, but I'm saying we've got to do something about our deer because we've got beautiful deer and you'd have photographers coming from all over the world or at least the U.S. To, sh to take pictures of these beautiful bucks. And that buck, because the state record, was a gorgeous 12 -1. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Carl Sims. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, you, this is when I start on the start. I want to say that I probably photographed more deer than anybody ever against the park, hundreds of thousands of pictures. And I'm a professional wildlife photographer. I um, was a former hunter safety instructor for the Department of Natural Resources. And I spent three years on your committee for calling the deer. Um, I was, I think, I feel like that was a publicity stunt to bring in there to go between people that wanted to shoot the deer and people that didn't want to shoot the deer. And myself and Skip Woody came involved with it. And the reason I feel that way is um, three, three years into this calling, which I figured was going to last any longer than that, um, you know, one of the deals that they said we won't touch the deer that live over in those fields by the golf course. So the kids that come out and see these deer, they were acclimated to people that were there. And I, I was going to hit to go to Florida and they said they're going to shoot the deer on the golf course. I said, you can't do that. Well, what happened? And I, and I said, let me see your arrow shirt value. They said they wouldn't be there. And I showed them every one of those deer were in the golf course that night. And I know part of this deer coming thing started because they didn't want deer running across the greens, and didn't want bucks rubbing their antlers on the trees. But I just felt that I was betrayed in that regard. As far as this deer, uh, I, I guess I'm sort of a little confused on who's responsible for this. Is it a road? Ranger that shot this? Is it somebody higher up? And I've heard that an employee had asked not to shoot the white deer that worked here. It seems like a cover up. I mean, there's so many people that knew about it, they're afraid for their jobs to say anything. And we just found out about it here for a week or so. 
Um, that deer showed up in my backyard on January 19th. I think it was 2014 and 13. Two winters that deer was in my backyard up at the camp area. And then it came down uh, to Blue Wall back here. Jim were photographing it. And the first thing I asked it to have blue eyes. And the second area had little three point <laughs> spikes. It, it was an amazing thing. It was a, it an amazing thing for Kensington or, or Kate's Cove and the Smokies or Yellowstone Park. It's something that would do people for a long time. And originally, when we had somebody here in the park, it was people's recreation to drive to this park and see the deer at night. And now you can spend hours afraid to see a deer in the park. And the last thing I want to say, I'd like to see the committee just take another look at this county. Look, at, you know, they know they go outside the park and they figure these numbers and stuff too. And on my property alone, there's three hundreds of them. They're full time. Uh, Jim mentioned the other day, how, how many people? Because we forgot we said it's going to be a deer season. I went into that little store off Milford Road at 12 o'clock last Sunday day. A man lived across the street from the uh, park said they had already shot nine deer. They'd already shot nine deer. I have neighbors that poach all the time. They shoot all night long. There's a lot of people that hunt the borders of this park, and I think that should be taken into consideration on the bulk number of deer that you take. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I lived in Bloomfield Hills 50 years before I moved to Milford, and I'll tell you why, Kensington Metro Park. We love the walking, the biking, the kayaking, and we love the nature. The osprey, sand cranes, wild turkeys, swans, Baltimore orioles, and especially the deer. I never saw, let's call it whitey or old blue eyes, and now never will. And it was a buck at eight points, said the paper. You're looking to raise revenue? You could have really marketed this. Put them on the cover of your brochure. Offer a class called Where's Whitey? Try to find him and shoot him with a camera. Not gun. If you had to kill him, why don't you stop it? Put him in the nature center for generations to see. At seven dollars a car, think of the income. We need you to change your policy and don't shoot white deer. Whitey could have been the poster child of a pure Michigan campaign. Think about it. You know, and he was shot in February. We're just finding out now. Do I spell cover up? For our files, it should be public information. What was the name of the company you hired to call the deer in Kensington? And what was the name of the sharpshooter? Paper said he didn't notice that it was uh, had antlers, a point. He didn't notice it was white. Guy's not that sharp. I think he needs an eye exam. <laughs> if you cover up the name of the company and the name of the sharpshooter, you know, a Freedom of Information Act request could find that out and be made public. Your brochure talks about preservation. This wasn't preservation, this was destruction. Thank you, sir. I'd just like to acknowledge that the Metro Park system covers a huge diversity of ecosystems. Each park has its own uniqueness on its location, and uh, the benefits that are offered to all the people of Southeast Michigan. Um, I live out by Kensington, and I've been to many of the other parks. Um, the people of Kensington were given an unbelievable gift, and you swarmed you know, for all of Southeast Michigan. And part of your mission statement um, the Huron Clinton Metropolitan Authority, a regional park system created in 1940 by the citizens of Southeast Michigan, provides excellent recreational and educational opportunities while serving as stewards of those natural resources. I think you people should read that over and over to try to understand what that means. Our efforts are guided by the belief that the use of parks and exposure to natural environments enhance society's health and the quality of life. Natural environments and seeing the wildlife and trying to keep the park um, a place where it's beautiful, not just everything mowed, everything cut down. You complain about geese, the more you mow, the more they come. At the peak of the um, deer population, you could go to this meadow um, on the south side of Wild Wing Lake, and you could find this meadow was full of wildflowers and it was full of deer. And you'd find mom and the babies, and there was all kinds of deer. Then you started. Um, then as time went on, the uh, Russian olive took over. It's just, now it's just jungle. There's no wildflowers, and now there's no deer because you kill them. You blame the deer for the wildflower disappearance, and it's not the deer, it's the Russian olive. So I think you need to examine 
what's going on and stop this hatred for killing the deer. You can't even see a deer in the park anymore. You get there at daybreak, you drive through, and there's nothing. You just don't, your actions speak louder than your words. And I think you should re-examine what's going on in this park system. Thank you. My name is Gail Mitchell. I am the sister of Gregory Mitch Miller, who was mentioned in the article. He's an amateur photographer who has been photographing things from outer space to little, now he's into little tiny bugs. So when he first saw this deer last year, he was mesmerized. He was, he wrote about it in an email that he sent me that he could hardly put it into words, that he felt privileged that this deer stopped right where he was. He saw him through the trees. He photographed him. He was so happy with the way the picture turned out. He gave one copy to my son, who is a deer hunter, and my son was just thrilled with this picture. He gave another copy to the, um, um, to the Nature Center, and they have a painting on their wall there. And so when I called my brother and I said, did you hear what happened to that deer? He was absolutely devastated. He felt like he had lost something that was never going to be replaced. I think that's the feeling that most people have. It was a beautiful animal. Whether it was a mistake, if it was, somebody needs to own up to it, somebody needs to change something, something needs to be done, but that deer is gone. If another one comes, what are you gonna do? You know, people just disregard nature anymore. They just don't care. Well, it's a deer. People go hunting deers all the time. This was a special deer. And for all the people that have that are feeling this loss, you know, what What can we do now? Something needs to change. And as my brother said in his letter to the park office and anybody else you can think, manage. Whether you're the police department that's responsible for all these people that were supposedly sharps, sharpshooters, manage them. If you are the park director, manage it. Get the people on the same page that the citizens want you to be on. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I want to give anyone an opportunity who'd like to come and speak to the board. Anyone else? We'll now close that portion of the meeting and we'll now move on to the next slide. <laughs>